Anna Housley Jester introduces potentially complex concepts in kid-friendly ways to help children learn to calm their own threat response in the brain. Anna joins us now to share tips for the parents and caregivers out there to help calm anxious kids. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And I love it. The character in this book, the amygdala, mm -hmm. is kind of like a fuzzy Sesame Street character, mm -hmm. which you're very obviously very Inspired familiar with. By, yeah. Yes. Uh, and it makes it more approachable for kids to understand. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the story takes complicated um, neuroscience science, but boils it down into ways that um, adults can use to talk with their kids as they read the book. And it draws kids in to try to practice strategies to calm the threat response, just as they're caught up in the story. Okay, so for yeah. people at home who don't know, explain what the amygdala is. So the amygdala is basically the usual suspect for the threat response in the brain. It's a fun word to say, which is mm -hmm. why I featured it in this book. Little, really little kids can say it. Mm -hmm. And basically, it, it kicks off a response called the fight, flight, freeze response mm -hmm. that many people are probably familiar with, but kids don't know as much about. And that's the goal with this book, is to sort of take that, the idea of what the amygdala can do and what it can feel like when it's in threat response in your body mm -hmm. and how you can tune into that and use strategies to calm down. So is the amygdala also, like when kids are like in the twos and threes and they have tantrums, is yes. the amygdala also responsible for that? Can, like, is that how you can kind of also calm them down in those situations? Yeah, I mean, it's basically, um, we're neurologically wired right. to survive. Mm -hmm. And the survival mode is the threat response mode. So if we didn't have our amygdala function, we would step into traffic, touch hot flames, move towards things that are dangerous. So we require it. And so, it, yeah, it's wired from infancy okay. at birth. It's wired So I imagine birth. throughout the book, you put the amygdala in different situations so that the kids can recognize it. Well, actually, the amygdala, so the amygdala talks di directly to the reader right. and invites kids in by talking about how fantastic it is. Mm. Like superhero, you know, I'm going to, I take care of you. I'm ready for danger. Don't worry, I'm here to protect you. And then what happens is about a third of the way into the into the book, the amygdala gets threatened by something that's actually not threatening. It mistakes what it thinks is a scary monster at the door for a what turns out to be a small kitten delivering a large cheese pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the, one of the most like least yeah. threatening right. things you can imagine. <laughs> I was trying for that. And then the amygdala says actually, guess what? When Sometimes I make a mistake. Yeah. But could you help me? And mm -hmm. I really want it to be about aligning, like with your brain, because mm -hmm. your brain is in your head and it's in your body. And you, some kids get really confused about why do I act the way I do? Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're confused about why they get into angry outbursts. And I wanted this to be about teamwork. Well, so, and I like because you had him show like, okay, danger, like stepping into traffic before the cat and the pizza came in. And then yes. it goes into like breath work and how yes. to train your amygdala. Yes, which we know from the science is possible. It is. So, and it doesn't matter what age you are. People have bought this book for grandchildren or children, and then the feedback has been, I didn't know that this is why yeah. I get so angry right? and yeah. hot and tight in traffic, for example. It's because your brain thinks you're being actually attacked by a lion, and in fact, what's happening is that just all these cars around you and you can't get where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So we get, we get triggered and don't realize it, and you can change that across the lifespan. So I imagine you've tested this book with kids. Yeah. And, I, and what has their response been? What have you seen as a result of once the kids start taking what they've learned in this book? And, and, and enacting it in life? What I really love is when a kid as young as three or four will say to a parent, like, Mom, my amygdala is doing jumping jacks. Oh. I can tell that it's really angry and I think I need to do something to calm down. Mm. Or kids will notice it in their parents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, so it, we all have this response and we can all learn to kind of um, calm down. And very practical solutions like hugging your pillow tight yes. and doing the breathing work. Yes. And so ki things that kids can really grasp and understand in those moments. Yes. And the really important thing is that it's di different for every child and it's different for every adult. So everyone has different ways that they would use this sort of mind-body connection to calm down. The three key strategies modeled in the book are controlled breathing, progressive muscle relaxation, and visual imagery. So mm -hmm. controlled breathing, there's various strategies in the story. And then at the back, there's a special section for kids and parents to, to practice specific breathing skills. What I love about this is that you break it down in such simple terms because we hear about mindfulness. We yes. hear about all of these strategies and they seem so theoretical and so hard to attain, but you've taken it and broken it down, just not just for the kids, but as you point out, for the adults. Yeah, it's true. I think also there's this stereotype now or this like cliche, like, oh, just take a deep breath. Yeah. The reason it works is because when you're in threat response mode, your body thinks you're, say, running from a lion or ready to fight. And if you're taking deep breaths, the message back to the brain is, 
we can't possibly be being chased by a lion right now because we wouldn't be this calm, we wouldn't be acting this way. Uh, and I think what's important in, in the book and what I tell kids I work with in my practice is there's a reason to take the deep breath. It's not just because an adult is telling you to do it. it You're down. slowing it all down and the message, the neurofeedback is we wouldn't be breathing this calmly and deeply if we were in real threat. Mm. And so it's sort of important to distinguish between what's a real threat and what's actually, like, when am I really in danger and need to, And that, that's a life skill. Yeah, this mm. is yeah. a practice no kidding, over time. Right? <laughs> I'm a parent. We're still Ask practicing. my daughters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you guys can Not find perfect. the book, AnnaHousleyJuster.com. A uh, great read, quick read, and really breaks it down, as you said, for the kids. Yeah, Fantastic. especially if you have to do that 20 minutes of reading a day. Great there read. Go. <laughs> there you go. Something Thank you so much. Beneficial. Thank you. Thanks for having me.